uh, my name is Kevin Anyango, uh, the founder of Mutandao University School of Soft Skills. The platform talks about uh, those behaviors or characteristics that employers are looking for, or those that attract opportunities. But today, I am not alone. <laughs> today, I am with one and only uh, Professor Judy Wakihungu. Professor, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, uh, Kevin. First of all, I just want to thank you and appreciate you oh, for founding this platform. Oh, thank you. You're, you're very kind. Thank you for those words. It's, it's what we appreciate and expect from our young people like you, because you are digital. Some of us are analog and had to transition. So I really appreciate what you are doing. It shows leadership, determination, and a good example for our young men and women. And of course, I, I emphasize today because it's International Women's Day and you have taken this opportunity to showcase me uh, on, the, on, on, this, on this particular day, which I also value because it exposes me and what I've been able to do. Oh, Professor, thank you for those words. And talking about determination, um, I've got to ask you this. How is it meeting Pope? How is it meeting the Pope? Yes. <laughs> well, I didn't expect this um, uh, question, but this is an experience I've always hoped for. Uh, let me just give you a bit of my background yes, before you know what it actually means you know, to me, uh, which is that I am Anglican born, but Catholic educated. Oh, Consolata? Of course not, oh. Loreto. Loreto, Loreto, please, come on, I take that back. I'm going to edit it. Well, but, but, but I say also Consolata with all respect because so many of my friends and my relatives were educated at Consolata. And, and, you know, we've got this rivalry that we've had for many, many decades. And we always say power to Loreto, but that is, <laughs> you know, that is just a fun, uh, that, that just as part of fun, but you know, it's also dear to us. So I'm Anglican born. Uh, my grandfather was Canon Awori. Okay. Yes. Canon Jeremiah Awori, so it was strictly Anglican. And I was educated in Loreto, Loreto Convent Valley Road and Loreto Convent Musangari, which is of course strictly Catholic. So it was very interesting being at Loreto Convent Valley Road, which is about 500 meters away from my church, which is All Saints Cathedral. And you know, All Saints Cathedral is the helm of the Anglican Church in Kenya, the one that's right next to Uhuru Park and notoriously right opposite the Serena Hotel. So it was very interesting growing up in a Catholic school all day, being educated Catholic, and then having to walk down the road to be, to study for Bible study at the Anglican Church, my church, to this day, All Saints Cathedral. And you'd be happy to know, despite all of that, I am not confused. Now, this is what I have assured, you know, just by coincidence, that now here I am, yes. I am also the ambassador to the Holy oh, See. Yes. And remember, we had to educate you yesterday. <laughs> The, the, the Christian faith perspective of it is the Vatican. But it's a country. Indeed, yes. It's a country. And the government perspective of it is the Holy See. And allow me to correct you in public. Holy See is, you know how to spell holy, but see is S-E-E. -E. So do not ever correct us again. 
with your spell check. You know, you digital young people, <laughs> do not ever correct us again. Well, listen. Uh, when it ambassador, comes to government language. Well, uh, Ambassador, since you are scheduling me online, I'm going to schedule you as well. It has taken me over two years to bring you here. It's taken, no, it's not taken two years. Please don't exaggerate. I know you're a thespian. Six years, not six years, six months. Sorry, I correct myself. Six months, why? Scheduling. Of course, of course, of course. And also I am wearing my outfit from the train station. It's winter here. Yeah, of course, yes. Yes. Uh, well, listen, as ambassador, of, of course, this is all fun. Um, well, thanks for being here. And uh, I know my viewers will be asking, why are we talking about the Holy See, the Pope? And you have said you're the Kenyan ambassador uh, to various countries, that's France, uh, Monaco, uh, Serbia, Portugal, and the Holy See. Five countries, five five countries, countries. which means five jurisdictions. But, so how, uh, people will ask, how did you get there? Well, I know who you are. I know your story. You're not just born yesterday and born yourself in France. Uh, you've been a cabinet minister as well, I can see here. Um, so for someone that listen to us right now, and they want to be uh, the next uh, professor, what do you tell them? Well, I think, understand, and as I'm speaking to you, uh, uh, Kevin, I'm speaking to all of your peers and young people. First and foremost, have a passion for whatever it is you do. From what I'm learning from you is that you're really passionate about communication, about learning more about leadership and learning more about what it takes to succeed in public service. Am I correct? Correct, and thanks for saying that, yes. Yes, so what you do is now you determine what your pinnacle is. I don't know what it is, because this is the first time we are speaking face to face, although we have spoken on the phone before, and we have communicated throughout right. in terms of messaging and so on. And I'm impressed by your persistence. So what I see, the first virtue I see in you is your passion, communication, public service, putting Kenya on the platform and your determination to be a leader with a legacy in Kenya. I'm guessing, but I'm thinking you're using the ICT platform and communication. Develop that, develop that. But talking about passion, uh, so, so to short, talking about passion, can you teach passion? Uh, you know, now you're becoming a philosopher. <laughs> yes. Well, you're passion. Academician. Passion, passion can be taught from my experience. You know what we need as people, because we are all fragile human beings. And we all need to be taught how we can exploit our talents, if I may say so. So if I see that you have developed a passion for communication, determination, resilience, and these are attributes I have seen in you in the last six months that we have been communicating. And I know that if myself and many other people who have been through this experience celebrate you, it will enhance your passion. So you're born with it, there's nurture, you're born with it, nature. But it can be nurtured if you have the mentors and the champions that can encourage you. Ambassador, is mentorship overrated? Sorry, I didn't hear you. It's just a communication. I'm saying is mentorship overrated? No, I don't I don't I don't think it is because um, listen, um, I wouldn't be where I am today without the mentors I have had all these years, both men and women. Men have been very extremely important in opening doors. Women have been extremely important in opening doors, but women have been extremely important. Given the theme of today's Women International Day that is looking at the barriers, 
that women have and the fact that we are slowly by slowly breaking free of those barriers. So I can tell you with confidence that mentorship is not overrated. Mentorship is absolutely required. And for those of us who are standing on shoulders of hundreds of years of women that broke those barriers, all we have to do is show our tenacity, show our leadership, show our ingenuity, and then hand over the baton to the next generation. No, mentorship is not overrated. If mentorship was overrated, I wouldn't be speaking to you now because I would simply say I am too busy, but I know how this, how important this platform is because I need to instill the confidence in you. I need to instill the fact that you have been so tenacious and so resilient and so patient in pursuing this interview. And then yeah. you have succeeded. So of course, listen, you're talking about, you have told me you are busy. You are a very busy lady, I've got to say. And for those that have just joined us, uh, this International University uh, School of Soft Skills, and I'm talking to uh, Professor Judy Wakihungu, uh, the ambassador, Kenya's ambassador to, uh, to France, Portugal, Serbia, uh, and Holy See. Now, you speak very well, and obviously, you know, you've been in academics, you, you, you've got impeccable CV, but again, for people that are joining us and listening to us right now, and they're like, I want to be like that lady there. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, I, listen, I had um, prepared as, uh, some questions. I'm going to leave them there, actually. I took them away. And let's have a chat, Professor. Is this how you should talk, like with your peers as well? You know, very well measured, uh, well thought. Well, I'm a tough cookie. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but it's quite admirable. And that's the power of the platform, to show but, people that actually, people like you are just normal, but you just need to a bit of training. So let's talk about communication access because uh, most young people, even though they say there are no opportunities, maybe the gap is how they communicate. And I am interested in that calmness that you have uh, in you. Is well, that I, kind of well it's interesting. You know, first of all, thank you truly for your very kind no, words. Yeah, on. thank you. Thank you for your very kind words. When it comes to issues of communication, the advice I would give to, you know, our young generation, you know, our future leaders like yourself is to say that in a world where information is so informal, we have slang, always adhere to formal communication and know that when you're speaking with your peers, you can speak in any dialect that you prefer, but when you are speaking with your elders, always be formal. Let me give you an example. Like daily, I get hundreds of messages saying, Sasa Judy, <laughs> Ninataka Job. You know, that's a message that's already deleted because even formally, we don't even know how to cope with it. But if I receive a message, like I received from you, good morning, Her Excellency, Honorable Professor Judy Wahungu, I admire you and your leadership style. However, I am a young man that is trying to build my own enterprise immediately you will receive a response from us. Because already we can see your formality. We can see that you're all business. We can see you're serious and that you know the platform and the environment in which you're dealing. I have no problem. If I'm sitting with you informally, 
But when I'm sitting in my office and you're dealing with me formally, we must be formal. So that is the advice that I give to, to your peers. Now, you've asked me several questions, you know, given where did I come from, et cetera. Now, I grew up in Nairobi with much experience in my villages of Bungoma and, you know, and, and, and Busia. And, you know, in those days, we were expected to excel. You know, it, it wasn't an option. And in those days, parenting was extremely interesting because, you know, here you are, you are Nairobi kids, but three times a year, you're taken. Uh, those days, we used to call it home squared. I don't know what you call it these days. Do you, is, is, the, is the term still relevant or is it in the archives? Your kid home squared. Is it still? Yes, you still use that word, yes. I don't know, I don't know. So here yes. we were Nairobi kids speaking the way I speak, very strict ruling. Then you have to go to uh, Oshago, where every relative in the world has the opportunity to discipline you. And that enhanced the discipline, it enhanced knowing our ancestry, where we came from, our clans, who we are, and so on. So then we come back to Nairobi and we continue with our formal lives. We were fortunate enough to grow up in schools. And I say fortunate enough to grow up in schools where we were the bridge between colonialism, independence, and then we first become the cohort of the majority black Kenyans in still the British education that we're now taking over our schools. So we also had additional pressure because we had to show that we, formerly the word natives, and the children of natives, you know, can also exist. And that's a heavy burden. But you know, but all of us excelled because the schooling was top notch, you know, in the world. You know, it doesn't didn't matter where you were in the world. The curriculum was the same. The timing of the uh, mock exams was the same. The timing of the subject choice was the same at every single echelon of the sphere. So we knew we were competing globally, but also we knew that we were world class. We knew from when we were 12 years old, 13 years old, 14 years old, we knew we were world class. But we also knew, given the sort of very conservative schooling that we had, we knew that we were being taught as future leaders. So the weight was also on our shoulders. We knew we were going to be future leaders. So we were in a system that was extremely disciplined. Everything was timed. There was a bell for everything, a bell. There was roll call for everything. And you couldn't be sitting idle. You always had to be doing something. The motto was exploit your talents. So Kevin, it didn't matter whether you were talented in communication, you would be encouraged during extracurricular activities to practice that. If you were talented in sports, like some of us were, you would be encouraged to pursue that. If you were in, talented in debate, you would be encouraged to do that. Students were never perceived as failures. The pedagogy was extremely important in noting that every single pupil here, every single student here had a talent that must be celebrated. So on the day of what we call now graduation, there was an accolade for every student. Kevin is the best at debating. Judy is the best at physics or chemistry. Mary is the best at art. Anyango, you know, is the best at 
at tennis. This one is the best at hockey. And this other one is going to be the future president. This is what has guided us throughout our lives. It was inculculated in us from when we were 14 years old. What happened then? What changed, Professor? Oh, okay. Now, I think what happened is, and I want to be very careful in this, because I know your question is extremely loaded. And I can see in your eyes what you're trying to do. Uh, no, 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 no. Professor, I'll keep my <laughs> I am I am in shake because remember also you're talking to me on behalf of the head of state. That's very important to me. Well, I, I represent the, the head of state in this uh, five jurisdictions. I have of course been uh, a serious advisor in the environment platform. Uh, to the head of state for five years with a notable, notable, groundbreaking, world-class results, which, which you know about. But I think what change and what we continue to try to reform is that now we changed our educational system. So from going to uh, the 844 to currently what we are doing now, I prefer not to speak about this because we have Asiyas, my friend uh, of education, Professor Maloha, who's now currently supervising the ongoing exams. So we, we, yeah, we can have a, another discussion uh, about this as we... No, first of all, I prefer that you talk to him. <laughs> well, listen, I just thought there's a, there was a change in the educational system, which happened before... Kevin, you were not even a concept then. <laughs> you were not a concept. I don't even think your parents had met. You were not a concept. You were not a prototype. You were nothing, you know, at that time. So, but things changed drastically for those of us who experienced that change. I mean, I remember the change was so drastic from my own experience. Because my own experience is this, is that I... Uh, went through a period where I decided I actually wanted to be a professor. So I came back uh, home, having attained my master's degree in geology in Canada, and I wanted now to transit into being a professor. So I was, uh, and I'm cutting a very long story short. Yes. And so I was now teaching at the University of Nairobi at Chiromo in the geology department. As usual, I was the first woman to actually be teaching ge uh, geology. And you know, geology is a, field is a field subject. And I'm a field person. So here I am, and there were a total of, I think, 70 students at that time. It's a field science. Uh, I'm the only, I'm the first woman, you know, in the, in, in the faculty. And there was only one other female student. And this was during the double intake. So the double intake meant that we're, we were teaching two curricula at that time. Like I said, you are not a concept, you are not a prototype. So I'm just giving you the history of the loaded question that you asked. So here I am teaching at the University of Nairobi. Double intake was extremely difficult for uh, all of us. Why? Simply because we were teaching two curricula. The old curricula, which meant that a geology degree meant three years at the University of Nairobi at Chirum. But we were also now teaching the new curricula 844, which meant four years. It got to a point, so we've got double intake students, we've got the old curricula, which we're phasing out, and then the new, the new students. And it got, and the teaching load was quite heavy. So it got to a point where, at, and I was teaching, I think, three subjects. Uh, I know I was teaching historical geology, I was teaching paleontology, micropaleontology, and I think igneous petrology. Don't worry about what that means. 
And so I would ask the students, you know, it got to a point, and all of us were overloaded, but also, you know, excited about making the changes. But I'm just telling you what it means in the field for the teachers and for the students. And I got to a point where, you know, I would get into the lecture hall or the lab, and I would ask the students, which cohort are you? <laughs> so that I know exactly what I taught in the morning and what I'm teaching in the afternoon. I, which cohort are you? Are, the, are you the igneous petrology, petrology group that is finishing? Are you the micropaleontology or paleontology group? Which group are you so that I know exactly which curriculum to look at? Now, when I look at what is happening now with um, this experience for teachers, let's be very kind. Let's be very kind to both the students and the teachers. It takes time, you know, it takes time. It's fully loaded, but what we always, always strive for as a country in our education sector is to continue to provide world-class education. And let me leave it there. But, uh, Professor, I'll just go back a bit. Uh, when you're talking about when you are growing up, and the mentality that you had was success, success, success. Absolutely. So are we kind of, in the community now, kind of playing down success or being humble uh, in terms of pushing the children uh, to succeed? You, you see, we didn't have an option. You understand? We didn't have an option. And we never, we grew up in such strict, environments. So discipline was at home. Discipline was at school. Now, we could be disciplined by everyone. And I can assure you, I can assure you that I was caned more by my relatives than my own parents. <laughs> because I was a very young. Yeah, because, you know, everybody was uncle, auntie. Everybody was, yeah, everybody was uncle, auntie. There was no, you know, talking back. And, you know, and don't forget that those days, though, we didn't have idle time. All the time was managed. You know, we had timetables that were understood and that were adhered to. If there was a child you know, of a certain age that did not adhere to the protocol. You know, it was absolutely ridiculous that even this could happen. You know, it, 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 it was that. You know, I, I, I had a, a, an, an uncle that was the most draconian, you know, a person I have ever met. And, uh, you know, uh, you know, he went to be with a maker decades ago, but may he continue to rest in peace. But he was, he was that uncle that would tell you to go outside and fetch your own whip, choose it. And then he would discipline you with it. This is not your father. This is not your mother. This is an uncle you know, that would say, listen to your elders and so on. So that we have. But what do we have today? We have freer um, society, uh, you know, the systems and uh, the teaching philosophy, both at home, at schools and in workplaces is different. You know, it's more open. And I'm not saying that it's negative because it has been built from certain experiences. But the notion, I believe, of leadership that we had and the fact that one had to be tenacious and resilient has been lost. Instead, what I am experiencing, and I say this seriously with great respect for your generation, because don't forget I've taught thousands of students of your generation. But there is a very, there's a strong notion of entitlement, which we never had. 
what we knew to this day is that awards are earned, positions are earned, respect is earned. It is not entitled. Wow. <laughs> Uh, for those that are joining us, I'm talking to uh, Her Excellency, our Honorable Judy Wakdulu, uh, as a Kenyan ambassador to France, Portugal, Serbia, Monaco, and the whole thing. Now, uh, Professor, you're talking about uh, respect and like everything is not given. You've got to work for it. Um, so, allow me to ask about networking. Uh, and you mentioned that without mentorship, you wouldn't be here right now. And also, in the beginning of the discussion, we talked about a formal communication, especially when we are asking for something, or if, or, or, or if you want a visual paper. So how do you build networking? What should you tell young people that are listening to us right now? The importance of networking, and how do we do this in a way that works for young people? Well, I think um, what I heard, uh, because the there's some echoes here, Kevin, but the most important work, word I heard you saying is networking. Right. Right. Uh, let me just say this, and I salute the young generation for knowing how to network. And knowing how to network is exactly how I'm speaking with you, simply because you know how to use this platform that people of my generation are also just learning uh, to use. Do you know how to use this pl platform and how to, uh, I, would, I, would, I would say, uh, cut through the formalities that are very traditional. You know what's happening. Uh, you know in terms of your own ICT talents uh, I get many messages from people like you saying, you know what, you know, you're interesting, but you think you're, we, we think with my help, in other words, you, you, this generation's help, your reach could be broader and so on. So, you, you know, you cut through all of those ladders in terms of how you communicate uh, with the older generation and the, the leaders of our generation and how you also build your own, own, own platform. So network is not something I need to teach this generation. It's like we are, I am in awe of how bold you are. Because certainly at your age, there was no way. The hierarchy was very clear uh, in terms of how you earn your stripes and the formalities of how you just can't speak to this person or write to this person and so on. So there are many opportunities for people of your generation, but networking is everything. So for example, if there's a position that is opening up, wherever it is, whether it's in the corporate world, whether it's in the academic sphere, whether it's in diplomacy, whether it's in the public sector, it doesn't matter. Those that are in power, when they're asked to present candidates, there's something very peculiar that happens. They will remember that person that was in touch with them. Was it two weeks ago, three weeks ago? But you know, there's a certain chap. You know, was it Kevin, Dominic? You know, was it Nyambura or Nariaka? You know, was it Jane? They will remember that person that was in your, their faces. So, you know, this is the peculiarity. So I would just say, use these platforms to keep earning your stripes so that you build your portfolio, make it memorable and make it dynamic. Now, stick to the objectivity of the subject. Make sure that you have a distinct point of view. The reason I'm saying this is that when I look at, irrespective of my leadership, irrespective,
perspective of what I have achieved. And what I have achieved is I have stuck my neck out and have put Kenya on an international platform where so many other countries are emulating Kenya. I'm speaking from my perspective, but imagine also what my other colleagues that have been given this position can say. And then what do your groups say about us? Can I find buyer? <laughs> and you're looking for a job that sticks on to your portfolio for perpetuity. And I can assure you, you are not going to get employed anywhere. Wow, those, those are quite strong words. This, I cannot end this uh, discussion without talking about social media. You already discussed, you already mentioned, um, you know, we need to be upright when doing the twerking connection. But look, I approached you through LinkedIn, which is a social media platform. But some people take advantage of that platform, social media, to rather than seeking opportunities, is trolling. It would be good to hear from you and to the listeners how important social media is in our generation today. Um, social media is everything. It, 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 it truly is everything. And social media is of your generation. And I don't know, Kevin, how you describe yourselves. Whether you're, are you generation Y or generation Z? Did you? Uh, Z I would say anything. <laughs> some, some of them call themselves indigo children. This is Jui. You know, I have, uh, you know, nephews and nieces who try to make me hip. <laughs> well, you're doing very well, though. <laughs> and, you know, but social networking is very important. So I would say that, um, you know, if you have aspirations for achieving national, international standards, or just succeeding in your field, whatever it is, I would say refrain from being impolite unnecessarily, being rude unnecessarily. These are your elders. You don't know them. So just that knee-jerk re reaction of being abusive, it's truly unnecessary because it remains on your portfolio. It doesn't matter whether you delete it. The fact is that it's there. Be patient. I know that the value of, uh, of followers uh, is extremely important to people like you because that's just what it is to all of us, actually. But I would always say remain with that message that is encouraging, a message that says, okay, this is what Professor Judy said about whatever it is I said about diplomacy, about environment, about geology. But from my perspective, I have a different point of view. So you're differing, you know, with that leader's perspective, by being polite and saying, this is my view, and I think that my view is novel. Without having to refrain, eh, you understand what I'm saying? Because that's what you do. That's what most of your generation do. But say, listen, I have a different view. I have calculated this formula so many times, and I still think that the professor on this one is ill-informed and this is how i prove my perspective if you just continue that way you may not get those i don't know what you people like you people like thousands of hits me i don't know 
convey the message because that message will be heard with respect. Right, so people can always disagree politely. Um, just last question for me, uh, Professor, I'm going to take uh, from the public. Uh, Professor, first of all, I'm extremely honored to talk to you today where we are celebrating International Women's Day. And you are a woman that have actually gone through the barriers. You have destroyed those barriers, being the very first woman in Kenya to teach geology at Nairobi University. And you've gone ahead and you've done a lot of stuff. I cannot mention them here. But uh, allow me to ask this uh, question, uh, Professor. When you are employed, or when you're looking at people to bring into your team, what's the relevance of soft skills vis-a-vis -vis education? You know, first of all, you know, have a distinct point of view. Have a distinct point of view. Be clear about what your distinct point of view is. Be clear about understanding the organization with which you're joining or the team in which you're joining. Understand how your, that distinct point of view will complement the rest of the team. In other words, what is Kevin's contribution to the team? It's extremely important. Meetings and the way you uh, present yourself will allow you to be, to stand differently from everybody else in the team. So I want to know if I need this attribute, Kevin is my go-to person. If I need leadership in this area, this is my go-to person. And if I need leadership in this area, this is my go-to person. But we work as a team. Now, working as a team basically means that, yes, I have the vision, but in mediating and facilitating the teams, I'm simply the cheerleader. And I am very informal in terms of how I manage my teams because I listen to everybody's point of view because there will always be a moment and a time when your point of view will be extremely important. If I don't hear from you, then I worry. And I say, well, how am I failing you? You know, are you intimidated by others? Because when you came as part of the team, when we, you were recruited, you were very clear about the direction. You know, why are you standing back? Why are you being shy? Circumstances fail. I would say that even if you are reprimanded by your leader, by your boss, take it as constructive criticism. Always keep your chin up and then come back and show that you have class <laughs> and show that you still have that talent. So it's extremely important. We work in teams. Uh, our role as leaders is just to show the way because we learn every single day. I believe in lifelong learning. Every day I learn something new. And if I fail, I apologize. Yeah, if I fail as a leader, I apologize, but also try to encourage. Now, work, workplaces are extremely, extremely competitive extremely competitive. And even if I have, say, a group of 10 hmm, as a cohort, we know that in terms of the career trajectory, only one of the 10 will make it to the top. But if we work well as a team, and if we exploit the talents and the contribution of that particular team. These other team members will be able to find opportunities in other environments, in other corporate sectors, other opportunities where that talent will still reach the top. That's what I aspire to do. Wow, I can just sit and listen to the whole day. Uh, but and I cannot thank you enough for your time. Um, well, this is the part of the show where I normally ask my guest to introduce me to the next person. And <laughs> my list to you is huge, and it's a lot. And I know you know these people, Professor. So 
I would like you to give to at least two persons, which I know they are your peers, you interact with them. Should I mention the name here or should I go on, 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 on GM? <laughs> Let's just continue uh, communicating because of, because of the structure here, the, the sound oh. is not as well as I wanted it to be. Could you just repeat that? But I will say, let's just continue. Yes, yes, of course. I was saying that uh, this is a part of the show where I normally ask my guests to introduce me to the next guest. I do know that <laughs> the people I have, the people I have on my list, these are your colleagues, they are your friends, they are people you went to school with, they are people that you read your texts. So yes. should, I, should, I name, should I mention them here or should I go to the direct messaging? Let's go to direct messaging because I have to, there's so many. There's so many, both at home and internationally. There are so many that are as passionate as I am about imbuing and inculculating leadership skills in the next generation with our generation's point of view. But there are so, so many. So I would say, let us go on the tier okay. so that I, I don't put them on the spot. <laughs> we did. But look, I cannot thank you now for gracing this show. I know how busy you are. Um, you know, I know right now there's a pressure around the world, what's going on in Europe. So you taking your time from your important meeting with Interpol to come and speak to me and to the platform. I cannot thank you enough, Professor Judy Wakihun. So for those that have been with us, I was talking to the ambassador, a Kenyan ambassador to France, Portugal, Serbia, and policy, uh, Professor. Judy Wakihu. Professor, thank you so much for your time. And I'm glad we are part of the network now. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Thank you. Asante sana.